Hello and welcome to Living English. Last time on Sisters and Brothers, Steve was teaching Anne how to play darts when Anne decided to tell him about her missing brother. Now let's see what happens when Anne shows Steve a photo of her brother. This is your brother? Yes. I know this man. You know him? I'm sure it's him. This is a man who works at the store where I buy fruit. Oh, I knew it. I knew it was him. We must go there now. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's 10 o'clock at night. The market's closed. Let me have another look. How long since you've seen him? Two years. It's him. I'm sure it's him. What's going on? Steve says he knows my brother. What? Oh, I think so. He says David's working at the market. Hmm. That's right. My brother sells fruit for a living. Steve, are you sure? Yes. Anne thinks she saw him. Well, the markets are open tomorrow. Well, let's find out. I can't believe it. David working at the market. It looks like Anne is getting very close to finding her brother. In this episode, Anne tells Sarah what Steve said. We call this reported speech or indirect speech. Listen to Steve and then how Anne tells Sarah what he said. I'm sure it's him. What's going on? Steve says he knows my brother. Steve says he knows my brother. Anne uses the word says. Practice saying says with Anne. Steve says he knows my brother. What? We use says when we are talking about the singular third person. For the first person, I and we, we use say. I say, we say. For the second person, you, we also use say. You say. The third person is anyone or anything else. For these, we use says, he says, she says, the doctor says, it says. We don't just use it to mean talking. We use it to mean writing too. We say, the newspaper says. But when the third person is plural, we use say. The newspapers say, the doctors say, they say. And if we ask a question, we use say. What does Anne say? He says David's working at the market. He says. Now it's your turn. Steve, he knows Anne's brother. Steve says he knows Anne's brother. He David's working at the market. He says David's working at the market. Anne uses says because Steve has only just finished saying that he knows her brother. She could have used the past tense said. He said David's working at the market. My brother sells fruit for a living. Steve, are you sure? Yes. Anne thinks she saw him. He said, Anne thinks she saw him. We use thinks or think in the same way as says or say. See if you can remember which one to use. I, your English is very good. I think your English is very good. Michelle, your English is very good. Michelle thinks your English is very good. Now, where did Steve think he saw David? I'm sure it's him. This is a man who works at the store where I buy fruit. He thinks he saw David at the stall where I buy fruit. That's in the market. Notice that he says, this is the man who works, and not this is the man 
that works. Listen again. I'm sure it's him. This is a man who works at the store where I buy fruit. We mostly use who when we are talking about people and always that if we're talking about things. We say, I don't like cars that are noisy. But I don't like people who are noisy. Let's try some. I like cars are fast. I like cars that are fast. I like children laugh. I like children who laugh. You don't always have to say who when you're talking about people. You can also say, I like children that laugh. But with things such as cars, we always say that. We use words such as who, that, which and where when we want to say something about what has just been mentioned. Listen to the way Steve uses the word where. This is a man who works at the store where I buy fruit. He mentions the stall and then says something about it. The stall where I buy fruit. We use where to say something about a place or to provide extra information about a place. When Steve says, the stall where I buy fruit, we are told something about the stall. It's the place Steve goes to buy fruit. Here are some more examples. I want to see where you live. This is the place where I grew up. Now see if you can use the right word, who or where. This is the girl. She works at the supermarket. This is the girl who works at the supermarket. This is the girl. She is getting married. This is the girl who is getting married. She works at the supermarket. I shop there. She works at the supermarket where I shop. And we can put all these ideas together in one sentence like this. This is the girl. She works at the supermarket. I shop there. She is getting married. The girl who works at the supermarket where I shop is getting married. So words like who, where, which and that can be used to link sentences or ideas together. Let's try another one. This is the house. I live there. This is the house where I live. This is the man. He owns the house. This is the man who owns the house. And putting the ideas together. This is the man. He owns the house. I live there. This is the man who owns the house where I live. Now listen to what Anne says about her brother who works at the market. My brother sells fruit for a living. And this is Michelle. She helps host the program. This is Michelle who helps host the program. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Brenton. Hello, everyone. What does Anne mean when she says he sells fruit for a living? She means it's his job. His job is selling fruit at the market. It's how he earns enough money to live. We do jobs for a living. What jobs have you done for a living? I used to work at the market like David. I used to unload the fruit and vegetables off the trucks in the morning. Used to? We say used to for something that you did in the past but don't do now. I remember you used to work as a checkout operator. That's right. That was years ago. Now you try. Add used to 
to these sentences. Brenton, work at the market. Brenton used to work at the market. Michelle, work as a checkout operator. Michelle used to work as a checkout operator. We say, I used to work as a checkout operator because it was a regular thing, a job. I used to work at the supermarket every day. So I could say, I caught the bus yesterday, so I only caught the bus once. But if I say, I used to catch the bus, I mean, I did it often, every day. I used to catch the bus to work, but now I walk. Do you remember what Anne's job is? What does Anne do for a living? She works as a... She works as a wine importer. Where does her brother work again? I can't believe it. David working at the market. He works at the market. We mostly say that we work at a specific place. We work at the TV station. David works at the market. Let's practice that. I used to work the supermarket. I used to work at the supermarket. A teacher works a school. A teacher works at a school. A professor works a university. A professor works at a university. So what do we mean when we say that we work in something? We mostly use in for the general type of work we do. We work in the media. When I was a checkout operator, I used to work in retail. Anne works in the wine industry. What about when we say we work for something? We work for money. <laughs> no, I mean when someone says he works for a bank. Oh. That means the organisation you are helping with your work. A policeman works for the government. Or it can just mean an individual. I used to work as a babysitter for my aunt. Ah, uh, you used to work in childcare. Yes. Now it's your turn. Which words will we put in here? I work as a TV presenter, at the local TV station, I work in the media. Who do you work for? Well, I work for ABC Asia Pacific TV. It's a TV network. So I work for the TV network. We know that Anne's brother David works at the market, but what does he work as? Someone who sells fruit and vegetables is called a greengrocer. So David works as a greengrocer. Of course, you can also say he is a greengrocer. Well, that's all for today. We learnt about reported speech and what first, second and third person means. And some of the little words we use to talk about the jobs we do. In our next episode, we'll join Anne, Steve and Sarah at the market in their search for Anne's brother and find out some more about tenses. Mm -hmm.